Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery, and today I'm going to be recommending some fantasy romance books to y'all. So if you're new to my channel, you might not know that I absolutely adore fantasy romance books, and some of my favorite romance books of all time are in the sub romance genre of fantasy. I haven't read a lot recently and I haven't read a lot of fantasy romances but I like to say that the few that I have read are all-time favorites for me. So I believe there are eight books on this list that I absolutely adore that are fantasy romance books that I hope that y'all check out. Also if you're like a watcher of mine, a long-time watcher of mine, you're gonna know all these books, you're gonna see all these books, so most of these might not be new for y'all, but I thought I would put a recommendation video together for people who really want to get in the fantasy romance genre. So first we obviously have to go with probably my favorite romance book of all time. It's Radiance by Grace Draven. This is one of the first romance books that I ever read and it is still one of my favorites of all time, if not my favorite of all time. It is amazing. The third book in this series, it's a companion to this one, comes out in September and I am <laughs> so excited for it. This book takes place in a world where there are only two species of humanoid beings. There are the Gowrie or the human people who is Ildiko on the cover and then there are the Kai who Brishan represents on the cover. Each species thinks that the other species is grotesque and ugly, just horrible to be around. They're not necessarily at war with each other, they just don't like interacting at all they don't intermingle at all. One species has their own lands and the other species has their own lands and they don't really mix. Until one day, Ildiko, who is an orphan, who is the niece of a Gowrie king, arranges a marriage with Brishan, who is a prince of the Kai, but he is not in line for the throne. They're in this arranged marriage and the first time that they see each other is right before their wedding and they think that the other one is absolutely hideous, ugly, but they become friends like, they respect one another and they start to fall for each other first through what's on the inside and not what's on the outside and they become fast friends their marriage is just them growing in their friendship and it is beautiful and funny and sweet i love this it has little sparks of magic in there it has an amazing funny banter between the two of them a great friends to lovers story that is literally like amazing the second book is a companion that has more of a world building aspect this book is definitely character driven if you are not into character driven books i don't know if i would recommend this book to you because i'm just in it for these characters and what they go through not the action or the plot necessarily but then book number two gets more into world building and actually war stuff so again love this one <laughs> next we have another Grace Draven book that I absolutely love that no one else has read we have Master of Crows if you love the relationship between Feyre and Reese from the Akatar trilogy I recommend this book this book is all about a woman named Martise and I believe she's actually a slave the conclave own her I think it's kind of like the government in this ruling fantasy land they own her and the conclave have been really wanting to take down or get information on the master of crows who is this sorcerer who basically lives in the middle of nowhere that no one knows anything about but they think that he's dangerous or think he might be dangerous so the conclave really want martise to go spy on him and martise agrees to this because she wants her freedom the conclave say that they will grant her her freedom if she goes and spies on this man. I believe that the conclave go and bring her to him as like an acolyte or a future sorcerer herself to try and develop her own powers. Master of Crows, Silhara, is <laughs> very reluctant to do this because he's not a very emotional driven person. He's very brooding and standoffish, but he agrees, teaches her how to use her powers, and she ends up falling in love with her target that she's spying on. <laughs> I don't know, the relationship between the two of them just really reminded me of Favorite and Reese in some aspects where they weren't expecting to fall in love with each other, but they did anyway. Favorite was very reluctant to fall in love with Reese. Martise is very reluctant to fall in love with him because he can be very brooding and standoffish at times. I don't know, you may not see the connection, but I do. I really feel like their relationship is very similar to theirs. It is so steamy, it's so good. Again, another fantasy romance that I love and this one has more of a magical aspect to it than Radiance does. Next we have The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. I have a physical copy of it, but it's packed away in a box somewhere because I just moved, so I don't know where it is. So here's the picture. This one is so long, but it is so worth it. You wouldn't think by the cover that it's a fantasy romance, 
kind of looks like a historical romance. It's kind of like historical and fantasy mixed together, if that's your jam. Our main character, Winter, is a king, and he really wants to take revenge on the king of Summerlee. And his revenge will be going to Summerlee and marrying one of the king's daughters. The Summerlee Kingdom is very well known for the king's beautiful daughters, so he really wants to take one of the daughters for himself. But little does he know that the king of Summerlee actually has a secret daughter that he despises. Her name is Kasmin and she can control storms. But the king of Summerlee decides to trick Winter and marry him off to the daughter that he despises without Winter knowing. He thinks that he's getting a beautiful famous daughter as his bride, but he's actually getting Kasmin. Winter doesn't know that he's marrying this woman because she's wearing a, um, a covering the whole time because so he doesn't know that it's the wrong person. It's just hate to love romance mixed with magic and fighting with magic and powers and it is so good. Next we have Make Me Burn by Tiffany Roberts. Now this one is about a demon named Marthanion and Marthanion has been causing a ruckus in the world that he's in and basically is destroying so many things. So the powers that be in the world or the police of their world decide to lock him up and transport him to an island that takes away all your magic and you can't do any magic. So Marthanion gets put on this island and he hates it. He hates it because he can't do any of his magic. But when he's put on this island and he's sitting on shore, he sees a woman out in the water doing magic. She may or may not be a siren and he may or may not fall in love with her. So it is a siren demon romance. I love this one because I really connected it with our main character woman because she's so innocent and she knows nothing about the world. It was really interesting to see Marthanion like just teach this siren the ways of the world and what things mean and what to say to people. It was really cute and sweet because you see this really buff demon guy who's really scary like become a big softy for this woman. Again, love this one a lot, really recommend it. Next, I have another staple on my channel. We have Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. This is a fantasy Beauty and the Beast retelling. So Sorsha is labeled as a midwife, but she actually is really wanting to be a doctor and study medicine. But in this time period, in their fantasy land, women cannot be considered more in the medical field than a midwife, so she's called a midwife. When she was little, she was adopted by this man, and he has become sick with this plague that has ridden the whole entire village and land. And so Sorcia really wants to go and find the cure for this, develop a cure for this to go and save her father. But she can't, so she decides to go take a chance and go ask a witch for help. The witch tells her that she'll give her this cure to this plague if she goes and does a favor for her. The witch asks her to go to this island in the middle of nowhere to bring back the prince there. Now this prince used to be the heir to the Seelie Crown, Seelie Court, Fae Court. One day he battled with his brother and his brother cut him. Geodes and gems started growing out of his body. The people of this land found him ugly and gruesome and so they outcasted him onto this island full of misfits who were also outcasted from their lands. So he's basically become the king of misfits on this island. Sorcerer has been tasked to go bring this prince back to the witch for an exchange of a cure to this plague. Maybe when she gets there she might fall in love with this brooding fae. So if you like fantasy romance, if you love fae, I really recommend this one. Beauty and the Beast stories I absolutely adore. I don't think I'll ever get tired of them so I absolutely love this one. There's also a second book called The Veins of Magic. This is that's a companion one to this one and I've yet to read book number three but book number three is Bride of the Sea and this is a Little Mermaid retelling. All of the stories in this series are retellings. A lot of Emma Hamm's fantasy books are retellings. She has a whole Beauty and the Beast other series that I really want to get into so if you love fantasy I really recommend Emma Ham. Next I have a recent read of mine. We have A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. This is a hilarious fantasy romance. I love the banter in this book so much. So this book is about a main character named Kat and she has been hiding out and disguising herself as a soothsayer in this traveling circus because she is on the run from a very powerful person because she is actually a kingmaker and a kingmaker is a magical being that can only exist once every 200 years and she has like so many powers it's amazing one day when she's at work in this circus pretending to be a soothsayer a man named griffin shows up and griffin recently conquered a neighboring land and put his sister on the throne and he's been looking for something or someone to keep his sister on that throne so he comes in contact and sees cat and realizes who she is 
so he kidnaps her to bring her back to his land. So this is a road trip fantasy kidnap story where <laughs> Kat and Griffin end up reluctantly falling in love with one another. The banter is amazing, top notch, super duper funny. Kat is one of the sassiest main characters I've ever read from the point of view of. It, it's so funny. It is amazing. I really recommend this book. I can't wait to continue. I'm going to read book two very, very soon. Next we have The Midwinter Mail Order Bride by Katie Wilde. So Princess Anya of a neighboring land to kill the conqueror has decided to travel to his land to offer herself up as his bride. Anya is very desperate to secure a kingdom of her own and so she really wants to take this opportunity to go marry Kale the Conqueror. But when she gets there, Kale doesn't think that she's there to marry him for the right reasons and so he decides to take her back to her kingdom. So it's a traveling fantasy romance of Kale bringing Anya back to her own kingdom. And through their travels and journey back to her kingdom, they may or may not stumble across some obstacles and also fall in love. Another great, amazing one. I had so much fun reading this one. It's very short. It's a very short fantasy romance book that like, I feel like the world building was very well developed for such a short book. I love this trope of like the big buff barbarian scary thinks he's ugly looking guy like falling forward like the beautiful woman even though he thinks he doesn't deserve her and she also loves him back which she has no idea why <laughs> just a short fantasy romance book that i feel like a bunch of people will love or enjoy reading lastly on this list we have the king's spinster bride by Ruby Dixon. Yes, a Ruby Dixon has made it onto this list. If you didn't know, I absolutely adore Ruby Dixon. She is very much known for her dystopian, apocalyptic, and sci-fi books. This is a prequel to her only fantasy romance series, which I have not read the other books in the series yet because they're all like over 600 pages long. But this one is very short and it is a novella. So when Princess Hala of Yishram was 16, her father ended up dying and being conquered by the Cyclops. Before they were conquered though, her father had kidnapped the Cyclops King's son, who was eight years old. And so Hala and this boy really connected and bonded through this experience and him being kidnapped or whatever. Um, they became friends through all of this. When Hala's father is conquered, Hala becomes the queen for only a couple of hours before the king of the Cyclops takes the throne from her. Through all this, she actually protects the Cyclops boy because her people really want to kill him to get back at his father for killing the king, but she protects him through all of that. This boy has not forgotten since. It's 16 years later, Hala has lived in kind of like a nunnery on the outskirts of town these past 16 years, hoping that everyone will forget about her because she really doesn't want any retaliation or any uprising. She doesn't want to cause any trouble. This boy, who we now know is called Mathior, is now the king to this land and he wants a wife and he wants Hala to be his wife. So he goes to the nunnery and asks her to be his bride and they have to go through a bunch of barbarian customs for her to be his wife and whoa. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. This is actually an age gap romance where the woman is older and it is it is so good y'all. This book is so slept on. No one has read this one and I need more people to. It is so stinking good. It's very short. Amazing. They're not actually Cyclops people by the way like Percy Jackson Cyclops. Basically these people when you become a man or put in the army you offer one of your eyes up to the gods and so you were an eye patch for the rest of your life and so you're a cyclops you have one eye left so that's why they're called cyclops <laughs> it is so much fun i can't wait to read the rest of the series because it just sounds so interesting this world sounds so interesting i really need more people to read it so i can gush about it with them because i have no one to do that with <laughs> anyways there y'all have it those are some fantasy romance book recommendations for y'all i hope y'all enjoyed please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye.